The first method that I'm going to use to show you to how to reinforce the stick in the test slippers forms a chain of slip stitch crochet along the stick between the stitch columns in the stick. In fact, you can see where I've already started to do it here. I've, I've pulled one lot out. I'm holding the contrast colour yarn to the inside, to the back of the fabric, and I'm taking my crochet hook through this stitch here. Now that's one and a half stitch because I'm going through the middle of the stitch. It's one and a half stitches away from the edge of the main slipper. And what I do is I insert the crochet hook through that to the back, wrap my yarn around it and pull a loop of that yarn through that stitch. And there is one loop on my crochet hook now. This is a 2.5 millimeter crochet hook. It's a smaller size than I used to knit the slipper. I used 2.75 millimeter needles to knit the slipper with. So this is slightly smaller. I've forgotten what that is in the US. Is that US size two or US size one? Forgive me, and I don't know US hook sizes either off the top of my head. Right, so there I am. I've got my first loop on my crochet hook. And now I take the crochet hook through the next stitch down in that stitch column, wrap the yarn around it and pull it through. So now I have two loops on my hook and I pull the first loop through the second. The loop that's closest to the end of the hook comes through the first loop that I formed. And then I just give a tug on the yarn to pull it tight, to pull the the second loop tight as I do so. And what that does is that now hugs the yarn between these stitch columns that I'm working between here. So into the next stitch I go, wrap the yarn, pull a loop through from the back to the front, pull it through the loop that was already on the hook and pull tight to tighten the loop that we've now cast off. And I'm going to carry on working up this edge forming a chain with this method of slip stitch crochet. The secret is to pull it very tight as you work it so that it very tightly wraps the strands of yarn that the loops are working around and then um, that stops them from unravelling beyond the slip stitch chain. We're creating a line beyond which the Steak should not unravel. Creates a very firm edge to the steak. Right, I'm almost into virgin stitches here that I haven't manipulated before, so we should have less unraveling now. The um. I set this steak with a steam iron before I cut it to minimise the unravelling before I'd finished this reinforcement. I'm going to carry on up to the other end of this steak and then when I've um, pulled a loop through the final stitch I'm going to break off the yarn and pull it through the final hook on my uh, loop on my hook to finish it and then I'll weave that in after.
I'll show you the chain. Can you see there it appears as an extra, it's like an extra stitch column between the knitted stitches that's formed. It's very firm and these stitches that are on the outside of it on the steek are now the yarn in those stitches is held very firmly inside these loops hugging them tightly so that just in the same way as I can't pull that through my thumb and finger if I hold on tightly to it that's the effect that we're working to achieve here with this chain of slip stitches uh, if I were working in contrast colour you would be able to see on the inside the stitches if I were working in a, a yarn that contrasted with both the yarns I knitted the slipper with but you can't really see it very well on the back it looks like a line of back stitch, uh, sewn back stitch that's wrapping all the yarn and every single strand of yarn needs to have been wrapped here for this to be properly effective and that's it Thank you very much everyone.